ang kwetso. Mga ibrah pagkam to kaya mga kani tay biti sa mga ka ng bukul biti ka chun tay ng nang thap rin nha na may mga to ka tang sum nu đánh đau nhiệm vụ xạ xây sớm chơi. Thank you, Mr. President. Đâm năng xạ thị nhà sớm một cơn lục thiến. Witness, when we left off, your last last answer was that Nat told you in November or December 1975 that there were seven members on the standing committee. Can you now tell the court when Chuk was arrested and taken to S21? ហើយថាតើលោកអាចជំរាបដែរឬទេនៅពេលណាដែរដែលគេចាប់ឈុកយកទៅដាក់នៅសំភៃ Mengkini kemudian dari karya-karya yang lain sekarang, dari hanya serap orang yang mampu memerlukan pipon yang pelai itu, mian nak nunung. Suruh nih hal cu, hal cai, tiad. Thank you. Can you say whether it was before? Um, during 1975 or after 1975, can you particularize it to that or do you, do you not know at all? <coughs> I understand that you may not know the date that Chuk was arrested, but can you say whether it was in 1975 or after 1975? Are you able to do that? If you can't, just say I can't. Akun, kerawat jet sepram, ngeriang jet sepempel, rukak cong jet pemui. Thank you. When, when the, after the, the phone call uh, with Son Sen in relation to Chuk, did you hear later um, from Son Sen any information about what was decided with his upper, I think we said with his uh, brothers? Akun kalau di pejum kini neng, sensen kan aw ketemna prap kenyom. Tapi polpot aw kan an, ai kesan dah sama pengurut dal aw. Dal an masih tuh hai pol bot su kat tak. Lada pihup macuk paman piroy, je kemang. Sensen kat saya tak, hai sep piroy. Ai tu. Sun Sen got prab Tha bong phum chalai philiam tha ma roi phi roi Ay ban khum yeh jimu ing kwaat Khum tha mai ko bong man miyan prasa tha ma roi phi roi Ni khum su chun sen jang Ka tha doi Ta ka na phra ni yo bai ta ka na ke nji haa sa phi roi Nang wo pinh leng hai Ni Rung raak de Sun Sen tam na prab khum ka roi Pi ka pa chum a chan trai lek nuk And you said Pim. What's what was Pim's full name? ลูกนี่ยัยชมูกโกลมวยชมูกพิมพ์ตาชมวยได้บ้างชมูกเป็นสาวพิมพ์พิมพ์สาวพิมพ์เลขาภูมิพิบบุปีเมพตอลรบช
four levels um, to the Central Committee. And you've explained uh, three of them. And you had uh, one level being an assistant assistant um, to the committee, assistant to the committee, uh, candidates to the Central Committee and the Central uh, Standing Committee. What was the fourth level? Uh, the fourth level. Thank you. If we uh, look at the statute at um, Article 25, it states that the Central Committee must hold ordinary meetings once every six months to examine, monitor and deliberate all old work in every field and to bring up new work in every field. My question for you is, did the, did the Central Committee meet once every six months, do you know? Or how often did the Central Committee meet? If you can say. Okay. Are you able to say how long, how often the standing committee met? ការរៀនសុទ្ធប្រចាំឆ្នាំគឺមួយឆ្នាំ I mean, Mokpi Nyan to win the moon chum day, Gideon with Hai. Lichanet Nichi Cass and Kate Knunket the Maka, a jam chum, ring or hold mouth. A room in my main car get pram day, good mean tank be get moy mouth. Rock Rochanam, either type of moy type of bulk, some I get chum get a ring with Paul Porter. ນີ້ຂ້ອຍກໍຫນຶ່ງຊາຍບານປານນັງຕາມການສັງເກດເຄີຍຈະສະໄດ້ໃຫ້ຕາມການໄດ້ວຽກອົບລົງຂ້ອ
Do you know the relationship between the Standing Committee and the Central Committee? ខ្ញុំសំបិញ្ញលថាលេខារឬក៏ហៅថាគណៈកម្មាធិការភូមិវិភាគគ្រប់ភូមិវិភាគដែលជាសមាជិកមិនដោយឡាយឧទាហរណ៍អ៊ីនសេរីគាត់កាន់ខាងការបរទេសទាក់ទងជាមួយនឹងបាក់មាក់លេនីនជាបងប្អូនបាក់មាក់លេនីនទាំ
whether he can assist the chamber in understanding their roles other than what's placed in the document. It's also to um, ask the witness to look at um, some of the subject matter of the document to see whether that subject matter is consistent with what he believes to be the truth at the time, and that will certainly um, assist in uh, your honours in authenticating the document and uh, understanding whether or not um, this document is in fact authentic. There's certain language that's used in the document that the witness, um, I would ask the witness whether or not that's consistent with the language that was used um, by, by, um, by party members at the time. And uh, there are some particular um, dates and personalities I would like to ask the witness about. Um, it would be easier, of course, um, if uh, that um, information is uh, placed, placed in front of him rather than um, speaking to him uh, without document in front of him. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President uh, and Your Honours. And, uh, to everyone in and around the courtroom. It's uh, my understanding that the gentleman, in, in speaking with the co-investigative judges, indicated in one of his statements, I don't have it in front of me, but I do recall reading it very recently, that he had never seen this document until uh, he came uh, to this facility. So he was not aware of it at the time it was generated. And therefore, now showing him the document and asking him to explain what is in the document, I think, is uh, not appropriate the circumstances. With respect to having the gentleman talk about certain individuals that may be named in the document, I see no reason why the document needs to be shown to the gentleman. He can simply be asked, who is so-and-so? Please explain uh, if you know this person and if so, how. So, <clears throat> again, there are matters, that, there, are, there are ways of discussing what's in the document uh, if properly put to the witness without necessarily showing the document to the witness because this is not just some ordinary document. And as I've indicated, he's already in, he, he's told the uh, court investigative judges that he had never seen the document at the time. And that's why I object to this way, uh, way of conducting business not just with, with this document, but with other documents. So the prosecution will say they're at a disadvantage. Well, let me help them out. They can certainly ask about contents that's in a document, and there may be others that will be able to come here and discuss the document or the events. That, in my opinion, is the proper way of proceeding. And he's not in a position to authenticate the document. He may be able to be in a position to discuss some of the matters in the document, but it doesn't need to be shown the document and have it in front of him in order to discuss what may be substance in the document. Thank you. Um, my computer is not working properly, my screen is not working properly, I can't see the document yet, but, uh, my objection was not against the showing of this document, it was against the, uh, uh, the, the, the lack of follow-up question. Uh, the witness gave all, uh, a lot of information about various members of the Central Committee and what their responsibilities were, and I think it is uh, earlier today, it is the professional duty of the, the prosecutor to come up with uh, uh, Follow-up questions. Ask this particular witness what this information is based on. Uh, I don't want this information to be based on documents which uh, the witness has uh, read recently in his own case file. And the prosecutor, as I said, has promised on several occasions that, they, that he would ask those follow-up questions. I'm, st I'm still waiting for the, uh, the question with uh, regards to uh, uh, the, the various members of the, the presidium. Also promised a follow-up question which never came. Thank you. 
Thank you, Your Honour. Um, I think the, the main issue, and, and certainly the, um, what we took away from the test that Your Honours gave the other day in um, putting documents to, to witnesses, is that there needs to be a um, sufficient familiarity with the document or the subject matter or the issues uh, contained in the document before um, a document is put to a witness. And uh, we understand the reason for that because um, it would otherwise um, lead the witness just to repeat information that's contained in the document. So we're certainly not asking to do that. What we are asking, and we can um, have a few more follow-up questions, is that if a, if a witness has a sufficient familiarity or sufficient uh, relationship with matters um, that are contained in the document, whether that be uh, an understanding of uh, the type of language that's used in the document, whether it be an understanding in the, the form that's used in the documents from that period, or whether it be um, an understanding of events that are contained in the document and the witness can provide further information or personalities or dates. Um, that's why that's that would be the basis in which uh, we would submit it's appropriate to put a document to a witness because they won't be simply repeating the information. Um, they will be providing further information as to um, uh, understanding um, the, the relevance of the document, uh, the probative value and, and the authenticity. I mean, Your Honours have heard uh, many times at the document hearings that um, these documents are, aren't authentic. The prosecutor shouldn't be making submissions of, as to authenticities of doc the documents. Uh, we, we weren't there during the period. We're not in a position to understand whether the, all of the different nuances, the context of the document, um, would lend itself to uh, making the document appear to be uh, more reliable than less reliable. Um, what we are saying, when we do have an opportunity to witness, to, to be able to provide extra value um, in terms of understanding whether it's authentic or not, and extra information to the court in relation to particulars that are raised in the document, um, we would submit that that, that is the uh, import of the rule that was put before the chamber. Um, if the witness has nothing further to add, um, on the document, it would be very, uh, very obvious. And, Your Honours, we would submit that, um, that sufficient nexus between uh, the witness's understanding of the document, even if they haven't seen it before, um, that really is the rule at the international courts. Um, and perhaps whilst I have uh, the floor, if I can quote um, uh, a couple of cases, and uh, it's at the international courts, it has been allowed where the witness has a direct knowledge of the contents of the document um, or some aspects of the document that the document be shown to the witness. And that can be established first with a few questions. Um, secondly, if the, the witness has um, direct knowledge of uh, persons or events contained in the document to be able to further elaborate to the chamber as to what those persons um, and the events, the appearance of them in the document, what that means so that we don't get to the end of the, end of the case, the final submission, and uh, the defence and the prosecution are um, extrapolating or, or trying to conclude what all that material means when we have a witness here right now that, uh, if there's a sufficient basis, can provide that extra understanding, um, whether that's uh, accepted or not, it's a matter for your honours, and it can be obviously examined by the defence. Perhaps if I just, for the record, just quote um, a couple of cases. These cases are hard to find, Your Honours, because uh, often um, doc, uh, decisions in relation to um, these types of issues are not in full decisions, um, but they're actually within the transcripts. And I'd just like uh, to refer, Your Honours, to the, uh, the case of uh, uh, the prosec prosecutor versus Seschel. It's on the 2nd of February 2002. It's in, uh, ICTY case, a Yugoslavia case, where it stated that um, the witness has never seen this document, that's for sure, this is the judge, but the document mentions a number of items which you will see which cross-references what he said before. 
Let the prosecutor put the question, and during your cross-examination, you'll be able to provide counter-evidence. On looking at the document, this is the judge, I can see there are some paragraphs which coincide with what the witness has said already. And it goes on further, as the trial chamber concluded in a written decision, uh, the witnesses to testimony served to support the admission of the document because it spoke to the relevance, uh, reliability and probative value. Um, there's further decisions um, in relation to uh, Prosecutor versus Krajnik from the 24th of June 2004 at pages 4,292. Um, the Prosecutor versus Labanga, an oral decision from the International Criminal Court, the 27th of May 2009 at page 3. There are, there are other decisions um, in the same line, Your Honour, and basically the, uh, the, the test seems to be at these courts if the witness has um, an ability to be able to explain, understand um, events, uh, dates, people, or the nature of the document to the court. It's not whether um, they have seen the document before. Um, but it's whether uh, they have an abil ability to add value to the evidence, not repeat it, but add value, rather than um, at the end of the case, um, the counsel for all parties uh, simply stating, this is what this document means and this, you know, this means that. Um, we would submit that uh, this witness is in a uh, particularly uh, unique position to be able to understand the language used, um, the substance of it, um, people describe in it and provide further information. So, Your Honour, that, that is why we would ask that we be able to place the, the document before the witness because we think it's consistent with uh, general standards. Um, and we, we believe it will assist the chamber and certainly uh, the purpose is not to lead the witness to give evidence that uh, you wouldn't otherwise know. Just a word, short word. Thank you, Your Honour. Good afternoon, Your Honours. Um, we are facing two quite distinct objections from the respective counsel for Mr. Insuri and Mr. Nunchia. In response to the first one from Mr. Sorry, in, in response to the objection put before the court by Mr. Ingsari's counsel, and following on from what my learned friends the prosecutors have said, I think we must remind ourselves that we are in the civil law system, and it is really a matter of weight for your honours to put to the evidence adduced from the placement of the document before the witness. In relation to counsel for Mr. Nunchi's objection, if defence counsel has no objection to placing the document before the witness, then in my submission, the reliability of the evidence that the witness could give in relation to matters uh, which, as the prosecutor has said, might add value to the evidence contained in the document is a matter that defence counsel could simply put in cross-examination. Those are the two very brief comments that I have. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voulais simplement ajouter aux objections qui ont été formulées par mes confrères de la Défense que je crois savoir que ce document a fait l'objet de, de contestations euh, et qu'il n'a pas encore été statué par votre Chambre sur euh, sa recevabilité. Euh, raison qui, selon moi, s'ajoute euh, à celles qui ont été indiquées par mes confrères pour qu'il ne soit pas présenté euh, ce jour au
Thank you, President. Uh, last week, uh, a very similar objection was um, ruled upon by the Chamber. The rule is that the, any party may put a document to uh, a witness and ask if the witness uh, has seen this document previously. If the answer to that is no, then the document should be removed physically from the witness because otherwise it might be suggested that he is reading answers from the document. And uh, so the document must be removed physically. That does not prevent any party from asking the witness questions concerning the subject matter of the document. Uh, and uh, when it comes to uh, objections of this nature again, uh, if there are any further objections of this nature, the Chamber reminds the other parties that they will have their opportunity to examine this witness uh, and may raise these issues should they wish to do so. Uh, I, I, I do not use the word cross-examine. Uh, it is not in that context. I am saying that each party has the opportunity to examine the witness uh, when their turn comes round. Uh, and so the the uh, objections are, um, uh, are uh, the objections are not sustained. Thank you, um, uh, Your Honour and uh, Mr. President. Uh, witness, um, do you have the document in front of you? That's IS.63. Witness, can you have a look at that document and see whether your see whether you have read that document before. អរគុណអេកសារនេះគឺសហចក្រក្រមសើបអង្គេតយកមកខ្សួរខ្ញុំនៅក្នុងរាជអាកាសសើបអង្គេត <coughs> ហើយសេចក្តីស្របបស់ខ្ញុំនៅក្នុងអង្គយំនំជម្រះសាលាដំបងក៏ខ្ញុំឈរលើឯកសារនេះ can you read the title of the uh, document and the date? I, um, and then I have some questions to ask of you in relation to some matters contained in the document. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais faire une objection à la poursuite de l'interrogatoire par le procureur. Il me semble qu'en application de la règle qui vient d'être énoncée par Madame le juge Cartwright, la présentation, enfin, le document dont il s'agit n'était pas connu du témoin à l'époque des faits, mais elle a été 30 ans plus tard dans le cadre d'interrogatoires judiciaires. À partir de là, je, je ne vois pas pourquoi est-ce que le procureur se croirait autorisé à poursuivre ces questions dès lors qu'il apparaît que la règle qui a été posée par votre chambre, une connaissance 
Ils n'ont pas simplement par le passé, mais d'une connaissance à l'époque des faits de ce document, et bien ces règles n'est pas, les conditions de ces règles ne sont pas réunies. À partir de là, il me paraît que le document ne peut pas faire l'objet de l'interrogatoire que M. le procureur s'apprête pourtant à mener, semble-t-il. ជាតិការពាក្យដីឲ្យលោកគេសម្ព័ន្ធបើសមាគមលោកប្រធានខ្ញុំបានសុំបញ្ជាក់បន្ថែមទៅលើសហការីរបស់ខ្ញុំទា
Yeah, thank you very much. Very briefly, I know it's almost time to call today, but I noticed that the witness was studying the document while we were having this discussion. So this defies the purpose of the ruling, which was supposed to prevent from feeding the witness with information he's not supposed to see. Oui, Monsieur le Président, votre chambre vient de fixer une règle qui s'applique aux parties en matière de présentation de documents aux témoins. Mais quand j'entends dire que puisque ce document a été présenté par un juge d'instruction et n'est pas possible d'en discuter aujourd'hui, je crois que nous faisons fausse route. Cette règle que la chambre a posée s'applique aux parties. Elle ne s'applique évidemment pas à ce qu'a pu faire un magistrat dans le cours de son instruction. Or, ce témoin vient de nous indiquer qu'il avait eu connaissance de ce document, non pas à l'instant, mais pendant l'instruction. Je pense par conséquent que nous pouvons parfaitement discuter de ce document aujourd'hui. Ce que fait le juge d'instruction n'est pas soumis aux règles que la Chambre pose ensuite à l'égard des parties. Donc, il n'y a pas de difficulté, il n'a pas pris connaissance du document maintenant. Il a discuté de ce document avec le juge d'instruction. Je précise d'ailleurs de mémoire que que je me rappelle avoir euh, lu dans euh, le transcript euh, de l'appel la, euh, concernant euh, M. Doux que celui-ci évoque cette décision euh, du comité central le dans la déclaration qu'il a faite à cette époque-là au mois de mars. Par conséquent, il n'y a pas de difficulté, ce n'est pas un nouveau document que euh, les procureurs présentent aujourd'hui. ការសង្កេតរបស់យើងឃើញថាតំណងជាមានការផលចលំលើការបកប្រែដែលឆ្លងកាត់ការប្រើប្រាស់ភាសាដែលទាំង <coughs> ការបញ្ជាពិយាធិបតេយ្យឬក៏ក្នុងមុនលុងពេលពាក់ពាន់ទៅនឹងដោយការចោទប្រកាន់ប្រជុំរឿងមកជំនួញជម្រះនេះ
from Taylor Thank you. The um, chamber wishes to confirm that its ruling should not be understood to confine to be confined to the witness's knowledge of documents only during the period of democratic Kampuchea. The witness can be asked if he has seen this document before, uh, and if he has not seen it before, then he cannot in any way authenticate it, which is why the document should be removed from him. Uh, this is, uh, the authentication of the document is not necessary in this case, because it's already been put before the chamber. Or it's not necessary through this witness. It's already been put before the chamber, and his prior knowledge of the document has been explained by the witness and can be examined further by the parties should they wish to do so when their turn comes. So the uh, objection is not sustained. Um, thank you, Your Honours. Um, Your Honours, briefly, just before I proceed, um, there is one aspect of, uh, of the ruling um, which um, we perhaps, the prosecution perhaps would like to address um, at, a, at another time, and perhaps uh, if the parties could be given an opportunity as well, because this will come up a lot. But for the moment, we'll proceed on the basis of that ruling. But we would like uh, perhaps an opportunity um, uh, next week or at some point just to raise um, one particular aspect uh, of that rule. But uh, for the moment, that's just a, a request um, for early next week. But I'll continue with the questioning now. Witness, do you have um, the document in front of you? And can you can you read out? Um, have you read that? Have you read that document before? Thank you. The title of the document uh, is the decision of the Central Committee regarding a number of matters uh, dated the 30th of March 1976. And then the first item of the document states um, the right to smash inside and outside the ranks. The question I have for you is that after the 30th of March 1976, was there an increase in killings from what you could observe at S21 or arrestees coming in to S21? ខ្ញុំបានអធិបាយជូនសហចក្រកម្មសិទ្ធិមកេតហើយឯកសារថ្ងៃ <coughs> สัตว์ไอ้เชียมไอ้คือตีក្នុងជួរបាក់នឹងតម្រង់គេយុទ្ធជនយុទ្ធនារីបាក់ជន
Did I, did I hear you correctly that more people were killed before the 30th of March 1976? Is that what you said? Is The uh, prison population, uh, you said, at S21, or the, the number of killings at S21, was at least um, 12,000 people. When did, when did those killings start to increase intensity in intensity at S21? នៅមន្ទីរសមភិមួយយើងអត់បានបុកសធិតិដាច់ដែលឡាយពីគ្នាទេមកមើលពីពាន់ពីរយចិត្តសបីញាគឺសធិតិតាំងពីសម័យណា